the world is in the grip of a diabetes epidemic. Tipped to become the seventh leading cause of death by 2030. Diabetes is spreading alarmingly, particularly in developing countries like India. With an estimated 65.1 million cases, second highest in the world, India is witnessing a dramatic rise of this life-threatening disease in its younger population. According to the Indian Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism, one in five children diagnosed with diabetes is Indian and this number is rising. Should we fear diabetes? The answer is a big resounding yes, because diabetes can lead to complications such as blindness, amputation, kidney failure and cardiovascular diseases. It's time to fight back. Everyone who can should come forward, whether it's the government, private medical service providers or NGOs involved in this sector, because the clock is ticking. Diabetes, we now know, is responsible for over a million deaths in India every year. And the number of pre-diabetics is multiplying multifold, so is the number of young children and adults with diabetes. Hello and a very warm welcome to this special show on CNN IBN. Let's talk health, disease-free diabetes. We are talking about management, awareness and interventions needed in tackling with diabetes in India. I first introduce you to my esteemed panel here. I'll start with Dr. Amini. She's a senior endocrinologist and former head of the Department and Endocrinology, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Welcome, ma'am. Senior consultant endocrinology, Dr. S.K. Wangnu. Dr. Deepak Chopra, renowned author, spiritual guru, and founder of the Chopra Center of Wellbeing. Welcome, sir. And Mr. Gagan Bhalla, CEO of Apollo Sugar. I welcome you all, and I'll start with Dr. Amini. How did we end up as the diabetes capital of the world? When we talk about numbers, irrespective of the field, I think we are the largest because we have a country or a semi-continent with about one-sixth of the world's population living here. We also know that diabetes has existed in India for very long because if you look at uh, the old Ayurvedic literature, there is mention of type 2 diabetes and type, I mean, he has not mentioned it as type 2 and type 1, but the descript descriptions are clearly of two types of diabetes. So we've had a genetic predisposition probably and a large pool of people who were predisposed to diabetes. So both ways, because of the numbers as well as our genetic predisposition, we are bound to have more people with diabetes. Uh, Dr. Chopra, in your vast experience worldwide, do you see there are misconceptions in India vis-a-vis -vis diabetes or are we going wrong with the management and treatment somewhere? No, I think we have to understand, as Dr. Amini just said, that diabetes is not one condition. So, you know, there are many kinds of diabetes and India has uh, peculiarities that are not there in other countries. For example, you have type 2 diabetes in young people here, which is almost not existent in the rest of the world. But most of the diabetics in this country, if I'm not mistaken, are insulin resistant rather than insulin deficient. And that kind of insulin resistance is affected by many things, other than not only diet, but anything that's processed, manufactured, refined, mm -hmm. will interfere with the microbiome in the gut, which produces 25% of the molecules in our body, which interfere really with the cascade of hormonal events which are influenced by sleep, exercise, stress, diet, movement, so many complex factors. So lifestyle management is a very important component of diabetes. And people have to actually be able to monitor their status and adjust their insulin and requires a lot of education. Uh, Dr. Wang Nu, but how genetically prone are we as Indians? All over the world, the genetic studies done in particular, in India, we have a lot of studies done from South India, particularly from Chennai, where we have found a peculiar genetic predisposition for the patients who develop diabetes at the young age. Mm -hmm. You know, so the first sentence you told me, India is the diabetes capital of the world, but fortunately, India is now the second. The China has surpassed us. We are 65.4 million, and China is around 98 million. So that is one thing. India is now second 
and number two, the genetic predisposition makes the Indians more prone because our fat around the tummy is metabolically active. It's not the total body fat in Indian population. It's not the obesity. It is the metabolically active fat around the tummy, which is basically genetically predisposed to have more and more insulin resistance. And you see Indian developed diabetes at least a decade earlier mm -hmm. as compared to the counterpart Caucasians, Europeans and UK. That sort of brings me to uh, the question that is related with children. We are seeing diabetes and occurrence of diabetes in a lot of young children. Gestational uh, diabetes is on a rise. Uh, given the scenario in India, would you recommend a huge lifestyle change that parents need to introduce for their children? It is needed, but is it practical? That's the question. You know, you need a lot of... Uh manpower and education and lifestyle you need people to be motivated inspired it's enough it's good enough to know the facts but people are not influenced by facts facts induce fear but you have to f take successful stories of people who've either decreased their medication or even eliminated it and reversed type 2 diabetes and use them as examples dr amini um one aspect of diabetes is blood sugar, which is controlling blood sugar, levels going up or low. But there are a lot of uh, other complications that happen because of diabetes to other organs, especially cardiac complications. Uh, is it just enough to then say that if I'm controlling my sugar, I'm safe? Actually, I think what we have to remember is diabetes is not something which develops over a week or over a day or something. There is a long period of pre-diabetes and also a still longer period where we can say potential diabetes. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about control and the lifestyle modification Dr. Chopra was referring to, we need to start it long before diabetes gets established. Mm -hmm. And along with diabetes, there is hypertension, there is hyperlipidemia. And what we've seen is the lipid abnormalities are seen long before the blood glucose starts rising. The lipid abnormalities, high insulin level in the serum, these happen long before diabetes manifests. And we see this happen in healthy children of diabetics. So when you're treating a diabetic, we're not just looking at the blood glucose control. They have to be eating a healthy diet because we know that diabetes is more common among malnourished population. So that diet has to be appropriate. And in India, I think it's also equally important to worry about the stress. The stress of urban life itself is enough to precipitate metabolic problems. Control diabetes, I mean, sorry, control blood pressure right. and also attend to dyslipidemias. Mr. Bala, in view of the high risk and diabetes multifold manifestation, do you feel the need of centers in India that are specifically dealing with the management of this disease? Absolutely. I think given what's happening with diabetes, it's such a widespread phenomenon that the closer we can get to average citizens in their neighborhood, in their colonies, I think it's better that we'll be able to provide high quality services, provide lifestyle management support to them in their area and then help them manage the, the, the disease state and its comorbidities in such a way that if they do need to go to high centers of excellence like AIMS, like Apollo's ACORD in Delhi, then they have the ability to be navigated there. But their, I'll call it basic care, basic awareness, basic lifestyle management does need to get closer to the end diabetic in their home, in their colonies. Even with manifestation of diabetes, um, one has to have the awareness that they should go probably to check their sugar levels checked. And that again depends upon the awareness that is created by such centers or paramedics that are working with the centers. Right. I think like Dr. Wangnu and Dr. Chopra said, I think awareness of diabetes is a huge, huge issue in our country. And the more we can do uh, across public-private partnerships to drive awareness, drive free screening, uh, and make sure that people understand that, you know, finding this early, catching it early and actually managing it early is much more important than dealing with the comorbidities which come later. See, the comorbidities of diabetes, which include not just heart disease and cerebrovascular accidents, but a number of other things, you know, including chronic arthritis, many types of cancer. So it's a metabolic disorder that needs complex handling, not just 
control of blood sugar, which is only one component. You have centers abroad that are very holistic and the management is much um, advanced and developed. Uh, Do you Dr. Think Amini mentioned that Sushut mentions diabetes. In fact, very beautiful description of diabetes in Sushut Samhita. Eating but always hungry, drinking but always thirsty. The poor patient watches his flesh melt away in a stream of sugary urine. I can't find a better description. <laughs> right. And then the diets, you know, the phytochemicals that we now identify, the bitter foods, the adaptogens in right. things like amlaki and ashwagandha. There's lots of things you can do and ciliary uh, in an integrative manner to help people with diabetes. And before we slip into a break, uh, Dr. Bangdu, do we need to look beyond the allopathic medicine for management of diabetes? Looking beyond the medicine, the medicine yes. is not the only yeah. panacea for the treatment of diabetes. We had to basically look at our lifestyle, what kind of food we eat, and we just aware the patient, educate the patient, what kind of diet is healthy for the prevention of diabetes. I think that is on the paramount and the number one importance. Apart from the diet, a single sentence if we tell to the patient if you do 45 minutes to 60 minutes of exercise every day is just important. A third important thing, stop smoking, stop alcohol, keep your belly within the normal range of 90 centimeters in males and 80 centimeters in female. I think how the job is done. And apart from that, the role of alternative medicines. I think a little bit of Oh. Dr. Mini mentioned stress increases cortisol levels and disrupts hormones. The belly fat is related to stress yes. too and the belly fat itself then becomes mm -hmm. a, a source of insulin resistance. So it's all connected. Let's take a short break here but when we come back we'll talk about um, uh, intervention and awareness uh, and also how government can participate more in reaching out to people and telling them about diabetes. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching our special show on CNN and IBN. Let's talk health, disease-free diabetes. We are now moving on to discuss intervention plans and see if management of diabetes can be more effectively handled. Mr. Bhalla, what specific plan of action do we need to take to tackle diabetes? I would say there's, um, there's a lot of work that has to be done about education and awareness. I think we spoke earlier about screening. I think getting closer to getting this message out in the public is really important. And the more we can do shows like the one that you're currently hosting is really important to get the word out. I think the other thing is education. We've heard, uh, you know, Delhi Schools Project, for example, is doing some very interesting work to make sure that education related to diabetes is actually going into seventh class, tenth class levels. And I think those are great initiatives that the government is, is starting to think about. When it comes to actually managing diabetes, my point of view is there's really three things. One, we need to have the best clinical care provided to the patient. That's number one. I think the number two, I would say, is lifestyle management. We've talked a lot about this is not just a disease. It's really a lifestyle uh, management exercise and the discipline of diet, exercise, stress levels being controlled is very critical. And I think the, the third is really affordability. I think the more we do to make sure that diabetic care, whether it's um, uh, pre-diabetic, mildly diabetic, or comorbidly diabetic, uh, it takes a lot of money. If you, there are studies which show that the average diabetic spends about 30,000 a year in India. And uh, if you look at comorbid diabetics, they end up spending you know, 10 to 18 times that number. And that's not an amount of money which is easy in our country. So the more we can do to make diabetic care high quality, lifestyle support oriented and affordable, I think we'll be successful in combating this. Uh, Dr. Chopra, you always talk about holistic living and uh, making lifestyle changes. What would you recommend uh, uh, our viewers that the easiest thing to be adopted? In our experience, there are about five things that are really important that, in fact, influence your entire endocrine profile. Sleep, meditation. How many hours of sleep? <laughs> Six to eight hours, good sleep. But, you know, if you don't sleep well, you have disruption of hormones called ghrelin and leptin, which influence 
insulin metabolism or carbohydrate metabolism and influence cortisol as well, cause belly fat. Meditation, 20 minutes a day, twice a day is what we recommend. Uh, in addition to other uh, stress management techniques like yoga and breathing is what we do and movement through the day. Uh, food that is not processed, manufactured or refined, more in the direction of a plant-based diet and healthy emotions. Uh, if you pay attention to this and hydration, you actually influence the entire endocrine profile of a, of a person. Diabetes is the commonest reason for kidney failure, it's the commonest reason for blindness, yeah. it's the commonest reason for so many other comorbidities even now many cancers being identified. So whilst there's a genetic predisposition, there's a new science called epigenetics, which means that your genes is not the whole story, it's how those genes are expressed, how they are expressed into their you know, protein metabolites. And those are also influenced by our gut microbes, which respond to almost every experience we have, so it's complicated, but yet it's simple. Dr. Wagner, if we talk about uh, intervention, do you feel the government is doing enough uh, in reaching out to people and talking about diabetes awareness? I have seen a drastic change over the last one decade. Initially, there was more thrust on the communicable diseases. Now the government has woken up and NCD, the non-communicable disease has taken the upfront, particularly the diabetes and the chronic kidney disease and the hypertension, our health minister, Gulam Nabi Ajad, the last previous one, was very much interested and he has allocated a huge amount of budget for basically the mass screening above the age of 30 years so that they can pick up more and more people. So lately we have seen the government has taken some keen interest in the non-communicable disease the, and with the current minister, Dr. Harshwadhan, he is really into it. And he is the one who basically is very interested in basically slowing the imminence of the diabetes related complications because this is a huge problem. NGOs alone cannot support it. Apart from that, we, the doctor society, medical fraternity, should come up with some solid project. And the ICMR bodies, Dr. Amni can throw more light on that. Those doing a lot of work on the epidemiology of the diabetes and all that. Half your issues are sorted with awareness. As caregivers, as parents, as, um, uh, as aware uh, individuals, what do we do for our children to counter pre-diabetic stage? Uh, awareness helps, but awareness alone is not sufficient. Like he said, the government is doing a lot on educating. But government also has to provide the ambience to follow, make use of the awareness that they have. Like you tell everybody to walk. All of us do need to walk during our routine daily activities. But if you look at the daily roads, there are no pavements where you can walk. There are no parks where people can actually spend some leisure activity. So, and cleanliness. So the government has to do a lot to provide an atmosphere where people can actually follow the what they have learned from the awareness. Mm -hmm. Similarly, availability of food. You can get Coca-Cola anywhere, but you cannot yeah. get clean drinking water in many places. So maybe that is one major aspect that we have to attend to. Second is again, uh, for prevention in children, again, you have to fall back on education. One, there is a lot of hesitation to go and get tested for diabetes because most people believe once you're tested and you become positive for diabetes, yeah. then you're kind of prevented from yes. eating any good food. So you have to first get rid of that belief that diabetes doesn't mean the end of eating for you. It's just that you're trying to tell them to eat healthy. For children, exercise is equally important. This again is something which is difficult for parents to ensure because the schools have to have curriculum change where sports is part of the school activity and sleep. If you have to wake up and be ready for school at six and you're not sleeping early enough, you don't get enough sleep. And I think that is a major worry for parents. So I think all these needs to be attended to. And we are only, to, I mean, there is enough talk about the medical part, 
But what is not talked about is the lifestyle. And there is no way you can prevent or treat lifestyle related diseases unless we are paying enough attention to that. Uh, we do hope that there is uh, awareness from our end, intervention from government's end, and of course for management, there is so much being done by, uh, uh, by the scientists and in the field of medicine, there are so many innovations that are coming. I thank you all for uh, the insight and spending time with us, and I thank you all for watching. Thank you so much.